Welcome to our lecture online. Now this next problem on the JE main test involves several concepts all at once. It involves the de Broglie wavelength and involves the potential energy or the energy that is gained by accelerating charged particles across a potential difference. So let's read the problem. Let's come up with a strategy to solve this one quickly. All right, it says an alpha particle and a proton are accelerated from rest by a potential difference of 200 volts. After this, their de Broglie wavelengths are, L, are lambda sub alpha and lambda sub p respectively. The ratio of lambda sub p to lambda sub alpha is, and they give us four possible answers. Now, we have to be careful here is because here they put them in the order of alpha and on the proton, and here it's in reverse order. So that actually, when I was looking at it, threw me for a loop. So you have to be careful about what they're looking for. So the strategy is as follows. First of all, you need to know the equation for the de Broglie wavelength, which is lambda. Ooh, my pen is not doing so well here. Let me try this again. There we go. Lambda. Whoa, that's a... I'm going to get rid of that pen. That one is not working very well. Let me try a different one. Okay. So... Lambda is equal to h, Planck's constant, divided by the momentum, which is the mass times the velocity. So we need to know this equation. And then obviously, if you want to find the ratio, that means lambda sub p divided by lambda sub alpha particle is equal to h over mv divided by h over, and I'm going to use large m and large v to associate the mass and the velocity to a larger particle and a small m and small v with the smaller particle, the proton. Notice that the h's cancel out, and so this becomes the mass of the alpha particle times the velocity of the alpha particle divided by the mass times the velocity of the proton. All right. So that means that once we know the relationship of their masses, and of course we should know that an alpha particle has four times the mass of a proton, because an alpha particle has uh, twice, uh, has two protons and two neutrons, so therefore about four to one ratio on the mass. Notice that we have to be careful here because uh, the ratio here, of course, seems to be reversed, but that's okay, this is correct, don't have to worry about it. Um, the next thing we need to realize is that since the masses are fixed, we now have to figure out their respective velocities based upon the acceleration across a potential difference. So then the next thing we need to realize is that we have two particles that are going to be accelerated. Let's say that uh, here we have a positive charge, here we have a negative charge, which means we have an electric field that goes across like this. And then over here we have a proton, and we have an alpha particle. Of course, this has charge Q, this one has charge 2Q, so twice the charge of this one, and now they're being accelerated across a potential difference of 200 volts. So when they come across the other side, they will have picked up some sort of kinetic energy. So at this point, we have the kinetic energy of the proton and the kinetic energy of the alpha particle. Now, how do we calculate those kinetic energies? Well, first of all, we use the concept that the force, um, nope, let me take that back, not the force, the work done is equal to the force times distance. Now, the force inside the electric field is going to be E times Q, and of course, multiply times D, and E times D is voltage, so this becomes Q times voltage. So the increase in kinetic energy, the work done to move the particle across, which is the same as the increase in kinetic energy, is going to be Q times V. Now V is of course fixed, but Q depends upon the charge on the two particles. So that means that the kinetic energy, which of course is equal to work done, is equal to Q times V. So the kinetic energy of the alpha particle will be 2Q times V, and the kinetic energy of the proton will be Q times V. Ooh, we need to be careful that we don't confuse this V with this V. This is volts, this is velocity. So maybe I'll go ahead and say velocity of the alpha particle so we don't get confused here. And this is then the velocity of the proton. All right. So, 
Now, we need to find the velocity. So we know that one half the mass times the velocity of the proton is going to be equal to Q times V. Right, so the kinetic energy of the proton, which is one half mv squared, oh, v squared, sorry, forgot the square on the v. So one half mv squared is equal to q times v for the proton, that's this one, and one half big M times velocity of the alpha particle squared is equal to 2q times v. So now what we need to do is we need to find their respective velocities based upon this equation and plug them in here. All right, so I can see then that velocity of the proton is equal to, well, first of all, I'll do the square. Velocity of the proton squared is equal to 2qv, 2qv divided by the mass. And the velocity of the alpha particle is going to be equal to, that's right here, alpha particle, and we're going to square that, is equal to 4qv, 4qv over uh, the mass, like this. All right, so now we can take the square root of both sides. So we can say that the v sub p is equal to the square root of 2qv over m, and v alpha to the first power is equal to the square root of 4qv over big M. Like that. Finally, we can now find the ratio of these two. So now we can say that the Broglie wavelength of the proton divided by the Broglie wavelength of the alpha particle is equal to big M. Now notice that big M is equal to four times the small m, right? Because it's four times the mass of a proton. So in this case, we can say that we have four times the mass of a proton times the velocity of the alpha particle, which is right here, the square root of four q v over m. Now m would be four times little m, and the force cancel, and we divide that by the, the uh, wavelength of the alpha particle, which is uh, m, well, it's the ratio m times velocity of the proton, which is right here, which is the square root of 2qv over m. Now notice that here this is the square root of 2. I can pull that out. So this would be equal to 4 divided by the square root of 2. Now, of course, the m's cancel out. Pull out the square root of 2 times the square root of qv over m divided by the square root of qv over m. And of course, those are the same, so they'll cancel out. So finally, we have the ratio of 4 divided by square root of 2. Now, looking at the answers, we have to somehow manipulate that. Notice that this can be written as the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times 2, because this times this is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, divided by the square root of 2. These cancel out 2 times the square root of 2, which is 1.4, so that's equal to 1.4 times 2 which is 2.8. And notice that's one of the answers. That's answer B. And so that has to be the correct answer for this particular problem. So yes, there's several concepts here we have to realize and a lot of manipulation of the equations. But again, coming down to it, we need to find the ratio of the wavelength of the two particles. The wavelength of the proton divided by the wavelength of the alpha particle. So it's H over the momentum or H over MV. I use small m, small v for the proton, big M, big V for the alpha particle. Then, of course, you can see that this ends up being big M, big V over small m, small v. But because we don't want to confuse it with the voltage of our potential difference, we change it to volt velocity of the alpha particle divided by velocity of the proton. Also realizing that the mass of the alpha particle is four times the mass of the proton. Then we have the concept of accelerating something over a potential difference. So work done is force times distance. Force inside electric field is E times Q. E times D is voltage, so Q times V is the work done, which is also the kinetic energy. Now for an alpha particle, the, um, what we have here, the charge is 2Q times V, and for the, for the proton it's 1Q times V. And so then we can say that the kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and then we can set up the ratio of their 
velocities because that's essentially what's going to determine the ratio of the alpha particles as well as the ratio of their masses. So when we count for the ratio of their masses and we count for the ratio of their velocities, then we can calculate the difference in a number. And that is how it's done. Three minutes? A lot of time. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of time to explain it, but yeah, it, it takes, I think it would, this would take at least three minutes to figure out. Um, yeah, it's, not a, it's not a straightforward problem.